Today I will show you the iodine clock reaction and how to perform it. Let's say this is solution A and this is solution B. Here's my reaction vessel. Solution A and B are mixed in the reaction vessel. Both appear to be clear liquids. The method I'm using to perform my iodine clock reaction gives a result that's not as amazing or cool as other iodine clock reactions, where mine, instead of all of a sudden becoming black, sort of starts to become black very slowly, but still a clock reaction. So. Yeah. This is four times speed, it takes a while. The more concentrated the solutions, the faster this would go. Right about now, you can see the solution starting to change color to a purple. It gets darker. This is normal speed. A deep purple. And continues to get darker. This is different from most iodine clock reactions, which immediately turn black instead of slowly get darker. You can see it's now bluish, blackish, purplish, a lot of ish colors. Now I'll show you how to perform this. First off, start with a solution of iodine and alcohol. Iodine dissolves in alcohol, but not in water. You also need two test tubes or beakers or flasks. So first, add a small amount of your alcohol iodine solution to one of the test tubes. Now, oops, I just tripped over the tripod. Now add about 10 milliliters of water to the test tube with the iodine alcohol solution. Now make a solution of sodium thiosulfate. Simply Place some sodium thiosulfate in a beaker and add a little bit of water or just put in a little bit of water in the beaker and stir until it dissolves. I'm pretty sure the concentration doesn't matter but according to what I think, the more concentrated the solution of sodium thiosulfate, the longer the iodine clock reaction would take. This is sped up. Takes a little while for me to get all my stuff ready. So there's my sodium thiosulfate solution, and I take a small amount by pipette, add just enough to make the solution of iodine, water, and alcohol become clear. You don't want to use too much. Now in the second test tube, I'm going to place about 5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. Here's 5 mils of hydrogen peroxide. Here's a solution of cornstarch and water I made by adding a small amount of cornstarch to 50 milliliters of boiling water. 
I'm not sure why the boiling is necessary. I'm following instructions from something on how to make the cornstarch water, and it says to boil the water with the cornstarch. Add a small amount of the cornstarch water to the hydrogen peroxide. Here's some water in a beaker. To that, I'm going to add a chemical I've used in a lot of my videos, sodium hydrogen sulfate. It's a very good substitute for sulfuric acid. Make sure you dissolve your sodium hydrogen sulfate. According to what I think, the more concentrated the solution of sodium hydrogen sulfate, the faster the iodine clock reaction will occur. Now take a small amount of that and transfer it to the test tube with hydrogen peroxide and cornstarch water. This will be my reaction vessel. Now I pour both of the solutions into the reaction vessel and wait. Make sure they're mixed thoroughly. And time to wait. This is four times the original speed. These iodine clock reactions take a while to get going. But that's the whole point. You never know when it's going to turn black. Or violet blue. You can see it's starting to turn reddish pink, and now it's a deeper purple color. Really deep purple color starting to turn blue. Now it's a bluish black. Thanks for watching.